Hi right, folks, we've got a little something different uh, for you guys today. We're going to upgrade our computer. I built this computer in 2016 and what I've got in here is a uh, Intel i7, Core i7-5930. Now this was introduced in 2014 if I'm not mistaken. I actually built this computer. I got a good, pretty good deal on the motherboard and the processor, but it was already two years out of date when I put this together. I've been doing a lot of editing with 4K videos and it's it's struggling. It really is having difficulty with 4K. As a matter of fact, I almost always have to create lower resolution videos just to get through the editing process. So it's it's time for a, a major update here. We've got a uh, AMD Ryzen processor. It's a 5900X 12 core monster. Should do great with the videos. I do editing with uh, DaVinci Resolve. Um, many thanks to Micro Center uh, for supplying these parts at, at a very reasonable price. Actually, this use this is an open box. They just opened it for testing. Uh, there's no damage to it. It should be fine. This is an open box motherboard. I've got a uh, Gigabyte Aorus X570 X570 chipset. It's open box. Uh, we'll see how this works out. I've had pretty good luck with open box motherboards in the past, so we'll see if it boots okay. Uh, I, I've the problems I've run into with motherboards and processors and them not posting is that the motherboard BIOS is out of date, and if you have the most modern processor, the most recent processor, uh, and you put it in, it won't boot because the BIOS is, is doesn't know what that processor is. It reads the uh, the microcode of the processor and says, who? And just stops. So what you've got to do is you've got to update the bias. Now that presents a problem because the only way with a lot of motherboards that you can update a bias is you have to post first and do the bias update and then maybe swap out the older processor you may have in there to post with the newer processor. But a lot of motherboards, they are coming with what they call either BIOS Flashback, or in this case with Gigabyte, it's QFlash Plus, in which case you can actually update the BIOS without the processor being in there or the memory. You basically hook up the, the board to a power supply, and you download the BIOS file to a USB drive, and there's a special USB port, usually color-coded on the back of the motherboard, and you plug that USB drive into that port, basically hit a BIOS flashback button, or in this case a Q flash button, and the motherboard will automatically update its BIOS without having any processor or video card or memory installed. And that actually is, is, is very handy. I did do it already on this motherboard. I didn't film it, but I will uh, add a link to it in the comments so that you can see I'll find a, a good... I actually looked online and I found a, a good... YouTube video. So I'll just provide a link to that in the comments so that you can go ahead and see how to do that. But if you have a situation like this, and this is an X570 motherboard, it's AMD's latest chipset, you know, for the AM4 socket. But it came out before the Zen 3 architecture here of this uh, newer processor. And so it's very likely that if, you, if I were to put this in this motherboard and then just plug everything in, it won't post because it's an older BIOS. Now, if it was a more up-to-date motherboard, you wouldn't have to worry about that. But I, I went ahead and I updated the BIOS via that QFlash Plus. So that's all done. It seemed to, it seemed to go through uh, successfully. I don't know until we see whether this posts or not. So let's get down into it. Um, this is my case here. And I, I've got a Gigabyte motherboard in here. It's an X99 chipset, which was used with the... the, the or the yeah, Intel fifth generation processors and the sixth generation processors, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna go forward. We're gonna replace the motherboard and the processor. I have a uh, a AO what what is called an all-in-one liquid cooling. That's a Corsair, I believe, H60, I believe. It's as old as you know the the motherboard. I did replace that one when I replaced the motherboard in 2016. So. That's maybe near the end of its life anyway, so I did pick up a air-cooled 
heat sink here. This is a Fuma 2. I'll include a link to that down. I, I picked this up off of uh, Amazon. Well, let's let's get into this bill right now. All right, let's start by removing the 12 volt EPS cable here for the processor voltage. Get that out of the way. We're going to have to remove all this stuff here. As you can see, I'm not a guru of cable management, that's for sure. I'm working with an older power supply that's only partly modular, so I got a bunch of cables kind of like wrapped up down here that are not in use. So let's begin by taking off this liquid cooler here. Nobody can see it on camera or not, but I have hard drive here, another hard drive here. I think one's like a 10 terabyte for a, I use for storage. The other one is Oh, this, I like a four terabyte, which I use for intermediate storage for the most recent videos. And I have a solid state drive down in here. You can't see it. It's a, a, a SATA solid, solid state drive down here. I think it's, I use, I think it's around a one terabyte. And this is the M.2 drive. Um, this motherboard is old, but it still was able to take an M.2 NVMe drive. It's of course not as fast as it could be. It's, it's a gen four drive. So I, I, I did put a, uh, a new, the newest drive in there, knowing that I would be upgrading. So once I put the new motherboard in this, we get much faster speed, but probably about double the speed it gets now. Um, so this is in here now. This is where the uh, the boot, this is where the, the operating system is with this boot drive. So let's start by taking off this back radiator and fan. Again, this is the Corsair H60. This would be a bit small. It would still work with the uh, the Ryzen processor, but those processors tend to run hotter, from what I understand, during normal operation, and that's normal. But a AIO is small. Eh may not be quite adequate, especially if you're uh, doing things like editing, which I'll be doing, content creation. Not much of a gamer. The processor will throttle itself if it gets a little too hot. So you will have a loss of uh, performance. If you don't have that adequately cooled, Let's get this out of the way. Make sure the fan doesn't drop in there. Drop that. We'll take the fan out. We're going to unplug it. It's plugged in down here. Disconnect the pump. Now this is just held in with four thumb screws. We'll use a, a screwdriver here to start them. And remove these and crisscross pattern. I should be able to sell this motherboard on say eBay along with this processor maybe separately. Recoup some of the money back because it still would be a decent enough rig for gaming and and you know for maybe editing 1080p video should be fine for that. I had no problem with 1080p video with this processor and motherboard. Get this out of here. Maybe I should have removed the video card first. I'm going to try to get as much of this out of the way as possible so we can just pull this motherboard out and drop in the new one. All right, there we go with that. Get that out of the way.
Yeah, I'll set it over here somewhere. All right, let's take this video card out. Disconnect. It's power. By the way, this video card is a 1070 Ti. It's a little old too. Trying to replace a video card and buying, you know, getting the, the, the latest generation, as you might realize, is sort of impossible these days. Get that out of there. Set this aside. We're going to reuse this, of course. Now I cleared a lot of space here. Let's see what we want to do here next. Going to unplug the optical drive cable, get that out of the way. The fan, yeah. uh, let's see, maybe we can, fan cable I should say, maybe we can get around that. Hard drives might be in the way. Let's see, I'll unplug it, save that it has power. See, maybe we can get enough room just by doing that. Unplug the SATA for the second hard drive here. And power cable. And these are SATA plugs down here. I'll plug into the motherboard for the optical drives on the hard drive. And yes, the SD drive. Plug that. Plug that. Yep. It's kind of a pain to get to those. I might want to remove these hard drives. Just get them out of the way. Plug. Let's see what we can work with. Let's work around them. Plug that one. Try to get these out of the way. This is the front audio. Pull that out. It's in there pretty good. There we go. This goes to the front audio jacks. Yeah, we're, we're getting clearer here. This is the front USB 3.0 ports on the front of the case, so we can unplug that. Now these are your connectors for the front case, the LED lights, the hard drive lights, and the power and reset buttons. We're going to have to pull these out. Those are unplugged. This is the 24 pin power to the motherboard. Let's take the memory out first. Get that out of the way. This is 2666 megahertz memory. It's a little slow. You should be using a little bit faster memory. Oops. Oops out like this. 
get out of there. Uh, with the Ryzen processor there, I think the recommended sweet spot is 3200 megahertz, but I'm not going to see that much of a difference, really, barely that 0.5% of a difference by using a slightly slower memory. And I already have it. You know, if it's worth going out and buying slightly faster memory for such a small gain. You can always do that later if we want to. Let's see if we can get this power cable out for the motherboard. This is the main power cable for the motherboard. I'm not sure you can see that on camera. Probably can't. There we go. There's a hold it up there so you can see it. Let's see if we can get that out of the way. Well, let's see if that gives us enough room. Let me get this motherboard out of here. We're going to unscrew all the motherboard screws here. Screwdriver that's magnetic. I think this one is here. Looks like that's all the screws holding the motherboard in. Sorry if I'm bumping the camera, it is real close to where I'm working here. Yeah, let's see if we can lift this. Do we have another screw in here yet? Oh yeah, there's one more. Oh, I missed it. It's down in here. Let's see if that's it. That's it. Now I'll try to clear all these wires here as we lift this out. And there it is. We're going to remove this M.2 drive here. It's going to transfer it over to the new motherboard. Decent motherboard. Now, this actually has uh, uh, what's it called? The uh, Apple <sighs> Thunderbolt uh, for uh, daisy chaining video. I never used it. Uh, it's to be used with a, uh, a Thunderbolt monitor, and they're actually very expensive. But it's here, it's actually available on this motherboard. One of the early motherboards to incorporate it on an on a Intel motherboard. All right, we'll set this aside. We're going to use this fan to put back here. All right, let's clear this out of the way so we can prep the new motherboard.
even though this memory looks different, this is the same memory. I just bought it at a different time. I actually had 16 and I upgraded it to 32. But I made sure I got the uh, the right timing memory. Let's put it here. I believe you want to make sure there's no fuzz there. It's going to go. Yeah, there's fuzz there. Start it with this one here. It should be A1 and B. Let's see here. A1 and B1. For two matching sticks here. Again, they are all matching, but I want to just want to make sure that I put the two like sticks on the same channels. Drop our processor in here. Be careful with this here. I'm take it apart this way. Don't want to bend any pins. for a little arrow which is right over here you, know, you probably can't see that on the camera I'm try to zoom in on it get close to it as possible here a little arrow right there on that corner there's a little arrow on the processor hard to see it Hold the processor like that, you know, right on this corner here, and then get it to focus. Uh, come on, focus. There we go, right there on that corner. That corner. The little arrow. We're going to drop that in there, lining up those arrows. Drops right in, and it's in. Now, I'm unfamiliar with this uh, cooler, so I'll take a moment to read the directions on that, how to install it.
Got some hardware here. Comes with that fan that goes on the outside. That's the inside fan. Oh, it even comes with a screwdriver. Look at that. And there's our all important instructions. Now, let me take a moment to look at these instructions here. We'll bring you back here in a minute. A little longer than a few minutes later. All right, I think we're going to see how we're supposed to do this here. We're going to use a supplied screwdriver here. Remove the factory heat sink holders here. You can see this on camera. And we're supposed to put these plastic standoffs here, or rubber standoffs. Just like that. And according to the instructions here, are we missing some? Oh, here it is. Okay, those are the screws. These are the plates we use. We need to get rid of that. That's for Intel. Move that out of the way. Looks like they go on like that. Yep, if you have an AM4 socket, you would use these holes right here. And we'll do the same for the other side. Be like that. Oops. Set this down here.
Well, I think we may have those installed upside down. And we do. Again, I'm not familiar with this cooler. So bear with me here. It's a kind of mistake that someone could easily make. This one goes over here. This one needs to be raised up here in the center. And add on upside down. We'll get it. that Okay. Again, this is the Scythe Fuma 2, in case you're interested in the heat sink that I'm installing and how I'm installing it. Right. Let's see which one of these we have to use. Bring this toward us here. It should set in just like that. It's nice. You can see how it's offset. Let's see, would it be this way? I guess you can install it either way. Let's find out. Yeah, this is going to be installed this way here. Let's see how it's angled to stay away from the uh, the memory. So it's going to go on like that. Nice. Okay. So now it's time to apply some heat sink. Little screw cap here. Let's go with go with an X pattern here. I've seen so many YouTubers do. And we'll put a dot here in each segment of the X. That should be sufficient. 
and zoom me in on that so you can see slide it over there what I've got going on there all right now we should be able just to put this on there and tighten it down very carefully line up the screws and we'll just tighten this down little by little down evenly. Screws do have a stop. Okay, let's put the fans in here. I want the fans blowing that way so we'll put the fan in like this comes with a clip
got the outside fan. going this way too. Got to make sure they're both blowing in the same direction. So it should be installed like that. Oh, it's pretty close to the memory. And it does just clear it. in. Now it comes with this splitter cable here. So we'll just connect both fans to it. And one thing I probably should have done beforehand was put that M.2 drive in. So now I gotta work around the heat sink to do it. Let's get a smaller screwdriver for that. This is a Corsair M.2 drive. It has its own heat sink, so we won't be needing the motherboard heat sink. Let's see if we can fit this in here. Yikes. Yeah, I'm gonna need to switch that standoff. move this one down here. The other one there wouldn't come out, it's really tight. So let's see if that gives us the, the right clearance. I'm gonna put this, I may have to put this back in, let's see.
Now that's a little too tall, so we're going to have to remove that. Yeah, that's the right length. set. Put this back in here. There, so that stays with it. Okay, let's pop out the I.O. shield here from the old motherboard. Now, let's see how the new motherboard's going to fit in here. Let's see here. Uh, get around the wires here. There we go. All the standoffs here are lined up properly. Didn't have to move any of those. But I put these screws in loosely here for now. Make sure I'm not sitting on any wires here yet. It's been cleared out of the way. There we go.
Okay, we'll tighten all these down. Underneath the motherboard, there. There we go. start plugging wires in now this will have to go underneath here this will be tough to get to a giant heat sink here but we'll have to do it spin this around here I have to bump the camera and again cable management is not my forte main power plug in here. <coughs> All right, that's in. We'll plug in the optical drive here. is let's see here and we need the chassis connectors here we'll, uh, refer to the motherboard manual here for these connections This is the power switch right here. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but these connectors are labeled. This one says HDD LED, which is hard drive LED. So we're going to go ahead and connect those. using the manual, which gives us a diagram right here. Got my stomach's growling. This is the reset switch. 
which is going to go down here. This is the power LED. That's going to go right here. Power switch is going to go here. This is the hard drive LED that's going to go here. Okay, that's what we got so far. I'm not going to plug in all the hard drives just yet. We're going to see if we can boot to the M.2 drive, which is already installed there in the mother, but that's what has the operating system on it. Let's continue. I gotta hook up the audio, which is right here. You can see there's one pin that's blank or a, a blank space, and that's gonna get plugged in just like that. Same place it was on the other motherboard. Everything is very similar. Now let's see this. fingers in there and get these connectors up and connected. It's good that the these connectors are close to the same position as we had on the old motherboard. There we are. All right, let's install this fan here. Let's see here, we're gonna have a, have to have a fan. I see a system fan connector right there, so we'll install it like this. Got some screws here you can put the fan in with.
you can see what I've got going on here with the fans. I've got a fan which vents up through the top to vent the warm air up for the top. This fan is going to be venting out through the back, and these two fans are, uh, fans are going to be pushing air this way through the heat sink. Gives you good airflow. I actually have two fans here in the front, just beyond the hard drives. You can see them or not. And they're drawing air in. So we have air coming in, and then we have air flowing out back that way and up that way. So it should be good airflow. We need that with the, uh, the Ryzen processors because they do normally run hot. All right, here's our video card. Let's see if we can get this in there. It'll be pretty close to the heat sink. Okay, this lines up with another set of another opening here on the case, so we're going to have to remove this one here and slide it up here like that. card down. Tighten those up, and we need to get the power connector to the video card. Let's see where I tuck that down here. Where is it? And that's in. All right. Check these connectors. Okay, well, that's it. Let's see if it boots. Our fingers crossed. All right, folks, there you go. We're into the BIOS now. You can see the DRAM is. Uh, the memory, I should say, is indicated there, although it's going to be running at the wrong speed, 2400 megahertz, so we can fix that. 
All right, folks, you gotta love Windows 10. It activated automatically when I signed into my Microsoft account. Let me bring up CPU ID. All the uh, drivers installed instantaneously. I mean, it was, it was super fast. And you can see we're running with our new processor, Ryzen 9. Everything is good. We'll bring up the bring up the device manager. Everything looks good there. So we should be good to go. Perfect. That was easy. Compared to uh, in years past, when you installed a motherboard, you had to go through hoops and hurdles when you went to boot up Windows again. But because of the Windows 10, we're good to go. All right, folks, just to show you what we ended up with here. Now you can see, I actually rerouted the 12 volt cable here underneath the video card. And there's an opening right here. So that allows that to travel underneath here. And then you can see the shadow getting in the way, but it travels up underneath this. Uh, air cooler here which is a, a better routing. We also routed the audio cable sort of underneath uh, this cable here and it just sort of sets up above the power supply. You can see actually all the fans are running and this fan as I said before vents out. This fan vents out and the two fans on the uh, air cooler vent that way. So you have good airflow here. And you can see I have the uh, power supply turned so that its exhaust fan is facing upward because fortunately I don't have any room to put this on up on a uh, table. So this this PC sets on the carpet. If I had this power supply turned around, it would be blocking this ventilation port here, and it would be sucking dirt up too, you know, from from below. So this is the best. Uh, situation I found you know with where I have my case sitting and fortunately it'd be nice if I was able to have these cables here on the other side which you would get if I had these this power supply, supply flipped over but uh, can't do that so you can see all the drives are hooked up and we're uh, running well I think the chipset fan here only turns when it needs to so it's not turning right now and of course the video Hard fans only turn when they need to too so you can see that up and pace the camera up a little bit so that's it we're working well all right folks thanks for joining me on my latest project and I'll wrap it up with this video hope you learned something it's uh, always interesting and, and when dealing with these computers I always learn something especially with the newer hardware folks take care and we'll see you in the next video